Welcome to Highlands Presbyterian Church. We hope you enjoy listening to the message for today. We are going back to basics as our theme for the year. Each week we will add another brick as we build on the layers. Good morning everyone. Are we back to building the church from basics today. Is there someone out there who would like to lay this next brick? Anybody? Morning, Robert. I'm going to charge you with this brick here of purpose. May you fulfill your purpose in the body of Christ and use the spiritual gifts that the Lord has provided you with. May you lay your brick. (laughs) A short joke to start the sermon. Why did the scarecrow win an award? Because he was outstanding in his field. (laughs) But he was too humble to brag about it. Today we look at the book of Romans, where Paul is encouraging us to fulfill our purpose within the body of Christ, being the church. If we go back a couple of verses to the beginning of Romans, We have the well-known verses, which is, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is his good and pleasing and perfect will. This leads us to what we are going to share today. Now, with our renewed mind, what should we do? Paul warns us in verse 3, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. This goes against what the world is pushing at us through advertising. The advertising agencies are telling us that it should all be about me, myself, and I. This is where the power of the mind can either save our soul or destroy us. Paul makes the first task of a renewed Christian mind the obliteration of pride and the cultivation of humility. What's new about the renewed mind? Pride is put to death and humility begins to grow. Then in the second half of this verse, the positive alternative is giving, of alternative to thinking too highly of ourselves. He says, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Why does Paul make the measure of faith of the self? John Piper has three answers. The first reason Paul makes the makes the faith the measure of self is that the essence of faith is that it looks away from a self from our self to Christ and treasures him as infinitely more valuable and significant and worthy of esteem the second answer was Paul makes faith the measure of our self identity and self assessment because faith is a gift from God and therefore eliminates boasting. Think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Our measure of faith is a gift from God. Therefore, no Christian can boast over a non-Christian as if the Christian has achieved something by his strength or wisdom or virtue. This is amazing grace. It is grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. By grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. That's from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. The third reason is God assigns faith in different proportions to his people because it produces humble interdependence with all of us serving and being served, which leads to unity in diversity 
that is more difficult and more beautiful and more God-glorifying than if we all had the same degree of faith. Which leads us on to the rest of the reading from this morning. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to us. Do you realize that each of us has a function in the body and each of us belongs to the others to enable the body to function? Do you know what gifts you have been given? According to the Bible, these are some of the spiritual gifts. Apostles, prophets, pastor, teachers, evangelists, prophecy, teaching, wisdom, knowledge, faith, miraculous powers, healing, distinguishing between spirits, speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues, helps, service, administration, encouragement, giving, leadership, mercy, and celibacy. Many people get confused between natural talents and spiritual gifts. Natural talents are physical abilities to do special things. Some natural talents might be musical ability, carpentry, mechanical aptitude, and artistic skills. Spiritual gifts are spiritual abilities to do certain things. Natural talents are often the vehicle through which spiritual gifts can be used. For example, a Christian vocalist may have the spiritual gift of evangelism being expressed through the vehicle of musical talent. We are encouraged in verse 6 to 8 to use our spiritual gifts as we may also see in 2 Timothy verses 1, 6 to 7, which says, For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying of my hands. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. And then again in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 10 to 11, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and power forever and ever. Amen. We now continue to verses 9 through to 13. I'm going to use the New American Standard Bible for this reading. Love must be free from hypocrisy. Detest what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Giving preference to one another in honor. Not lagging behind in diligence. Fervent in spirit serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, devoted to prayer, contributing to the needs of the saints, practicing hospitality. Most people know how to pretend to love others, how to speak kindly, avoid hurting their feelings, and appear to take interest in them. We may even be skilled in pretending to feel moved with compassion when we hear of others' needs, or to become indignant when we learn of injustice. We put forward what looks like loving behavior that does not really signify what we feel inside. Just as Paul said in 1 Corinthians, if I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship, that I may boast, but do not have love I gain nothing. So you can do some remarkable acts, external acts of sacrifice, and not have love. But God calls us to a real, sincere love that goes far beyond politeness. Sincere love requires concentration and effort. It means helping others become better people. It demands our time, 
money and personal involvement. Abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. In the same way, you should have a genuine inner revulsion to, at what is evil and a heartfelt alignment with what is good. Believers are to show brotherly love to fellow believers and to respect all the gifted people in the church, not just those who gifts, whose gifts are visible. That's the only way the body of Christ can function effectively and make a positive impact on the unbelieving world. The Greek word for be devoted, polos torgos, means the type of loyalty and affection that family members have for one another. This kind of love allows for weaknesses and imperfections, communicates and deals with problems, affirms others, and has a strong commitment and loyalty to others. We, we are to honor one another above ourselves. To honor someone is to show genuine appreciation and admiration for the other individual. Never lack in zeal. A lack of zeal or apathy should not be part of our life. We must fight against discouragement and depression and negativeness. Instead, we are to be fervent in spirit. Fervent means to be full of energy, to be on fire and zeal and enthusiasm as we serve the Lord. Rejoicing in hope. This means that we should look forward with a an happy anticipation to all that God has in store for us. We don't have to fear our future when it is in God's hands. Christ is the reason that we can be joyful. Patient in suffering. When believers face trials or persecution, they to endure patiently, for they know that God is in full control. Faithful in prayer, a trademark of, a belie of believers is prayer, for in their lifeline, for this is their lifeline to God. They must be persistent in praying, both individually and corporately. The only way we can be patient in affliction is by faithful prayer and joyful hope. When afflictions come our way, the only joy may be our hope for the future unveiling of God's plans. Share with God's people who are in need. When some are in need, others who have the means should share what they have in order to meet the need, whether financial or daily necessities. In other words, we as the body should take care of each other as played out in the book of Acts. Finally, we are told to practice hospitality. This also refers to helping those in need and helping them in practical ways, but refers more specifically to protecting and caring for the traveler or the stranger. This, we have, we have been, this has been reinforced in the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 2, which says, Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by so doing, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. I will leave you with something to ponder on. Have you considered how you fit into the body of Christ and what role you have within the body? Are you using your gifts to build up the body and fulfill the ministry that God has called you to? Are you sharing your abilities and talents with others in the body that are in need? Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Shall we pray? Lord, we thank you for your son Jesus, who you sent to endure the cross that we may be redeemed. Lord Jesus, have your way with us and help us to fulfill our role in your church. Here and in, and in this world, using the different spiritual gifts according to the grace given to each of us. Lord, help us to be devoted to one another in love. Amen. Thank you for listening. Your tithe or offering is greatly appreciated. Please see the bank details attached.